Hello and welcome. It's Tuesday the 14th of November 2023 and this is my first vlog of the month. Welcome and if you are enjoying what I have to offer please encourage others to subscribe and share. Well the 14th of November is King Charles's birthday and he's 75 today. So at an age when most people will have retired, he is still working very hard. And for those of you who will disagree with what I say, uh, I just want to say that I thought the transfer of him becoming king after the passing of Queen Elizabeth was very smooth and seamless. And after the initial pomp and ceremony, things carried on as normal with the king and Queen Camilla and the rest of the working royals continuing with their engagements, many abroad flying the flag for Britain. In contrast, since uh, 2016, the UK government has had several prime ministers. Everything appears to be somewhat headless and all fingers and thumbs. Many of you have asked why it is we don't have a general election every time there's a new prime minister. Well, in theory, a general election elects a government for up to five years and the head of the party that has the majority number of seats becomes prime minister. And so this is how um, James Callaghan became a Labour prime minister after Harold Wilson uh, ret uh, well, retired really in 1976 and John Major became a Conservative prime minister after Maggie Thatcher was toppled and that Gordon Brown took over from Tony Blair when he stepped down. Now, uh, last year, 2022, in the UK, things were very bizarre. We had three prime ministers. There was, of course, Boris Johnson, who was toppled because he has a curious relationship with the truth. Liz Truss was dismissed because it turned out that she has no understanding of the ideology that she's spouting and it's crashed the UK economy further. And this is what our now Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, inherited. He is criticised for lacking the ability to make decisions. Personally, I, I think that's a bit harsh. <clears throat> because of the chaos that's left behind by the t previous two incumbents, plus the nightmare on the world stage, it's a very difficult time. This week, Rishi was forced to sack our Home Secretary, Suella Braverman. Her supporters say that she's a victim of a woman who's had the courage to make difficult and uncomfortable decisions. This is incorrect. She was sacked because she broke the ministerial code, and not for the first time. Rishi Sunak's big surprise, of course, was that he moved our uh, Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly, sideways to become the new Home Secretary and appointed a previous Prime Minister, David Cameron, as Foreign Secretary. Uh, as uh, Prime Minister, Cameron was considered very weak and ineffectual, so it'll be interesting to see how he copes in this role as Foreign Secretary. All I will say in his favour is he genuinely does have good contacts with dignitaries across the world. So hopefully this will help him negotiate during this tur turbulent period. Uh, for a former Prime Minister to become Foreign Secretary or even come back into the mainline politics is rare but not unheard of. I remember uh, Alec Douglas Hume. He was Prime Minister. He was a Tory Prime Minister from 1963 to 64. And then he became Edward Heath's Foreign Secretary uh, between 1970 and 74. David Cameron is no longer a sitting MP, so he's been elevated to the House of Lords to enable him to sit in the Cabinet. So he's yet another unelected decision-maker, and this has been frowned upon. There are currently 350 Conservative MPs that Rishi Sunak could choose from. 
is there no one amongst the 350 that would be suitable for foreign secretary? None of them? Really? None of them suitable? If true, how is this the case? I lay this at the feet of the constituency select committees. How is it they are selecting ineffective candidates? And then I have to blame the electorate. You have to look at those who vote them in. Well, thank you for listening again. Until the next time, toodle pip.